Hey guys, it's Miss Casey in the STEM lab. So our fiction book for this form of weather is going to be The Night Before the Snow Day. So this is by Miss Amy Warner. Twas the night before a school day and all across town a big storm began piling snow all on the ground. My snowsuit was hung in the mudroom with care. I got out a wool hat and mittens, a waterproof pair. What if this is a blizzard? There's a pretty good chance. So I crossed my fingers and did a snow dance. And just to make sure, beyond any doubt, I wore my pajamas turned inside out. That night I nestled all snug in my bed while visions of snowball fights danced in my head. My mom woke me up way too early the next morning. She said school was canceled due to a severe weather warning. When I looked outside, I let out a cheer. My wish came true, a snow day was here. After sleeping in late, mom made me pancakes in the shape of a snowman and lacy snowflakes. We played a board game by the crackling fire until the storm stopped, leaving snow piled even higher. I helped dad with the driveway, we shoveled and scooped. When we got to the end, we were both super pooped. Burr, said my dad, I'm going inside. Not me, it was time to take my sled for a ride. Up and down we went, over and over again. We made a train with our sleds, look, there are 10. Then we built a big fort, Jeb yelled, snowball fight. Within a matter of seconds, snowballs crisscrossed in flight. Soon my fingers and toes were tingling and freezing, so I headed on home, sniffing and sneezing. I hurried inside and drank a cup of cocoa. I told mom and dad I love playing in the snow. Don't get me wrong, I like school, I do, but a special day off is so much fun too. That night on the street, there arose such a clatter. I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. The plow, how it rumbled its blade oh so wide. It cleared off the street, making banks on each side. You know what that means, Mom said as she tucked me in tight. It's back to school tomorrow. No, not if it keeps on snowing tonight. The end. Hey guys, now since we talked about rain, which is one form of precipitation um, in our weather unit, let's talk about blizzards. So blizzards are not something that we usually see here in the Delta, but sometimes we think they'd be a lot of fun because of the snow that they bring. So blizzards are a type of weather that happen with the form of participation of snow. So this type of precipitation is when water goes below the freezing point. Do you know what degrees that water turns into a so solid? The freezing point is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So when the water reaches that temperature that's below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, it will freeze. So the liquid water turns into a frozen solid. So that's when we go to the different states of matter. And the different states of matter are solid, liquid, and gas. So we went from a liquid, which is the rain precipitation, and now we are at a solid, which would be the frozen point of the precipitation because we're below that 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The determining so, factor of whether we get rain or snow is directly related to the temperature that we have. So if it's summer outside and it's 80 degrees, we're most likely not gonna get any snow. We're just gonna have the liquid form of a precipitation rain. So more in with the cooler temperatures, the precipitation can either be rain or snow, depending on the air pressure and the temperature outside is whether or not we're gonna get snow as our form of precipitation as it falls from the clouds. And just because it snows, it doesn't mean it's going to be a blizzard. So we here in the Delta have been through some snowfall, which is just that um, the precip precipitation that's been frozen and it's falling as snow. Now, up north, blizzards are a lot more common. Blizzards are when the significant drop in the air pressure, the winds kick up, and it's more than just an inch or two of snow. It turns into feet of snow and the temperature stays cool, so it stays below that freezing point so that snow can accumulate outside. So accumulate means when it builds up. So, like, so if you're accumulating a really good collection of something, that means you're collecting lots of things and you go from having one or two of something to a whole lot of something. So in snow accumulation, it goes from a few inches of snow to feet of snow fairly quickly, and that's when the blizzard comes into play. So for a blizzard to start to form, we're going to have to have clouds. So clouds are formed in the atmosphere, and the clouds are formed when all those different water vapors and stuff gather together and 
form a cloud. So, and again, we'll talk about the different types of clouds later on because we have clouds that don't produce, produce any type of precipitation and then we have certain clouds that produce storms and then that can create the other forms of precipitation. So, we have our clouds and then when the temperature is below 32 degrees, so below that freezing point, we can have snow as our type of precipitation that's falling down. Earlier we talked about the different types of weather and how our teachers and our parents teach us how to prepare for certain things. So blizzards would be something that you would have to prepare for. Um, just like when there's a tornado, maybe mom or dad tells you to get in the hallway and to cover up. Um, with blizzards, it's not necessarily always protecting yourself. It's making sure you have your house prepared for something like having flashlights, some canned goods, um, some candles so mom and dad can light the candles in case the power goes out, having those flashlights in case the power goes out. So. But another way to prepare is to watch the weather for, um, you're probably more familiar with watching for tornado watch or tornado warning, but there are blizzard watch and blizzard warnings. And this is when they, um, the weather people will let us know that the air pressure is changing, that the wind is picking up, that precipitation is starting to fall, and um, what the temperature is outside, again, affects how that precipitation will fall, whether it's frozen like snow, or if it's just freezing rain, or even hail. All right, so I have a good nonfiction book right here for us when we're talking about blizzards. Um, this is our smart word reader from Scholastic um, on blizzards. So this book goes on to tell us the different types of winter weather. So we have snow flurries, snow showers, snow squalls, and blizzards. So it gives us four different types of weather that goes along with this certain form of precipitation. So snow flurries are light snowfalls, which is a lot of time what we're going to see here in Mississippi. And they'll grow into things like snow showers. Maybe we'll get those every now and then. I think I remember maybe one snow shower that we've had in the last two years. But snow showers, again, happen when temperatures stay colder, that air pressure is changing. And so here in Mississippi, our temperatures are not always low enough to stay, to stay at the level that it, we would need to have heavier snowfall even into the snow showers. So after the snow sh showers, we have the snow squalls, which is heavy snow showers occurring along with strong and gusty winds. And a significant amount of snow may build up on the ground. So that accumulation of snow. So the accumulation is how much is there. So like one inches, two inches, and then it may be feet. And then blizzards, which is this type of weather that we're talking about. Um, falling snow or snow on the ground is blown around by the winds that are over 35 miles an hour. So think about the speed limit signs that you see like in front of the school, they're about 35 miles an hour. So you may think that's slow in a car, but can you imagine wind blowing at that speed? So that's a lot faster. So the blizzards is when that heavy snowfall and those winds all kind of combine together and we get this form of weather. So our experiment to go along with this form of weather, blizzards, is going to be made to make our own snow. So at Christmas time, you might have seen the cool little packages of fake snow that you could get. I know there's some places around town that may still have some of the fake snow kits, or you can always order some offline, but we can also make our own with things that you have at home. So I just have a little container. You can use any kind of plastic bowl or um, casserole dish. Or if you're using a glass dish of your mom's, please make sure she knows and make sure you keep it on a flat surface so it doesn't fall. So then I have some baking soda and then I have some conditioner. So make sure you have conditioner, not shampoo, So because the shampoo will start to set up. So you're going to use your conditioner and your baking soda and this is how we're going to create our fake snow. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start by adding our baking soda to our dish. Now you can also use cornstarch and conditioner or another recipe to make fake snow would be to use baking soda and shaving cream. So if you have some leftover shaving cream from our rain in a jar activity, you could use that too. So we're just going to measure some out. I have a measuring spoon that's about a fourth of a cup. So let's add a cup of baking soda to our contraption here. So I need one more. Okay, then so I have my baking soda in my dish. Now we're going to add a fourth of a cup of conditioner. Now your measurements don't have to be exact because you can do it where it feels kind of like the snow that you want it to be. So let's add one more fourth of a cup of that conditioner. Okay, smells good. All right, so we'll add that in there and then all we're going to do is start to mix it. All right, so we're going to mix up our mixture of our conditioner and our baking soda. Now, the best way to mix it is with your hands, but I'm going to use this spatula right now. So, 
this is when you can start to tell what your snow is feeling like. If it's too chunky, you might want to add um, a little more conditioner. Or if it's not sticking together enough like you like it to, you can add a little more conditioner to it. So, we will just mix it all up. And you'll see it start to crumble up a little bit more like snow. And so then it feels, it even gets a little cooler, so you have your own snow. So for this STEM challenge, I want you to try to create your own fake snow. So you can use what we did, which was conditioner and bacon soda. You can use cornstarch and conditioner or shaving cream and conditioner. Or you can even look online for another recipe. So I would love to see your fake snow that you make. So I just want to give you one more idea for maybe our younger kids too. Um, with our fake snow that you have, you can also kind of make it your own sensory bin. You can add some magnetic letters or things like that, or you can spell out your sight words that your teachers have given you, or you can even throw in some toys that make you think of the snow. Um, or you could also bring back some of our transportation unit information, and you could put some trucks and cars that you think would be good in the snow.